Hello everybody. There's this cute little picture. I got at Goodwill for $1.99. And I love the picture. I don't like the burgundy and green though. Look at that. Oh, I think that's pretty. I, I love everything about the picture. <laughs> But it's a tall, skinny picture. And so I'm going to have to take the back part to get it out and paint the the two mats that's in it. I hope they're two separate ones anyway. And I'm not sure about what color yet or what color I'll do the frame. But uh, I'm wanting my stuff to be a little more shabby chic. Uh, so I'm trying to do <laughs> I guess a lot of it is, but, you know, I go a lot with the beiges and stuff. But I want to get the white and the pink. Get a lot of that stuff in. So, I think I'll paint these tonight. The mats. And then let them be drying overnight. And then I'll worry about the rest of it tomorrow. Okay, I used a razor to cut along this edge. To get the, the back off neatly. And this this little pattern to come in handy if I have to add uh, some cardboard or something back here but I think I can get it it's just those staples I think I can get it back in tight enough so hopefully I won't need my little pattern okay the mats are just one one piece and the picture is right here and it's taped on so what I've done I wrote top and then uh I traced around because the tape's not on there straight. So I'm trying to put the tape exactly like it was. So I figured maybe my little line will help. I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to get to a certain point where I can go to bed, but I almost forgot to show you what I'm doing with the frame. But this is the, the mat that goes in it. And I'm going to try to put at least one coat on the frame. And I've used painter's tape. And I just tore it in little skinny strips. And I'm going to try to have it. Because I've used Vaseline to get that look, that chippy look. And I just don't want that grease on it. So I'm going to try this painter's tape and see how that works. Okay, I'd let the mat dry overnight. And then I got up and held it above the pitcher. And it's just too light paint. So I went over the upper part of it with a sponge with that what's the color of that one ballet slipper and as I was smearing it it wasn't covering good in places you know because I needed to go back over it and I kind of liked it so like if you can tell right there I'm gonna leave it all streaked because I kind of like that I don't know if anybody else will but I do and uh on the frame I painted a coat of the just white in Waverly and then I went and I put some green I don't know if you can tell I put ivory on the white you can probably tell right here where I got the ivory and so I'll go back and put white on top of that and hopefully when I distress it just a little bit of that will show I don't know so, figured I'd try it. Okay, now I'm just going to go over it with a, another coat of the white. And I've been using this brush. I got it at Dollar Tree, I believe. And it's awesome compared to the old junk I've been using. <laughs> and I bought one of the brushes that Waverly makes for this kind of paint. Before the shelter in place started, I bought paints and the brush and all this. I can't find it. I don't know where it's at. So I'll be using this one. But I'm just going to paint over the tape, over the green and ivory and everything. And then I'll probably, before it dries too much, I'll get a wet rag and start distressing it. I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to start rubbing it and see what we get. I've just kind of dried it with the blow dryer. This will make it uh, the paint smooth out a little bit too. See, it ain't dry dry. My thumb was stuck to it. 
but I'm thinking too much of that green is going to show. If it does, I can go back over those areas. Oh, look, I went all the way to the wood. I guess we're lighting up my pressure. And I've left the tape on there. And the, the blobs are where I had the uh, different color paints. I put them on blobby, hoping they'd show through better, but I don't think that was a good idea. I'm not getting a whole lot. Let's work on these corners where I had a lot of the green. There we go. We're getting some different stuff there. And then if I want some of the actual wood showing also, I can just hit it with some sandpaper. And that way I got the green showing, but not too much. And I can get some of the wood showing too if I want. See that blob? Oh, that looked pretty good. I just chipped it with my fingernail. Can't forget the edges, because a lot of times in a booth, somebody might see the edge before they see anything else. Okay, let's take some tape off of this end. Let me back out a tad. Ooh, look how chippy. See how chippy? I think that looks pretty good. If I do say so myself. I'll zoom in on this one. Where's it at? That's there. Yeah, I'm liking that tape idea. Good idea right there. So far, anyway. Okay, let's zoom back out. We got some more tape to remove. Here's one. And I figured if the tape got embedded down in the paint bad, I could get tweezers and pull it off. Let me zoom up wrong way. So we got a little notch here with the tape. Because if I nicked it with the tweezers, I mean, what would it matter, you know? <laughs> That was another long piece. And I may rough that wood up a little bit with some sandpaper because that wood looks a little too pretty. Uh, where's another piece? That'd be the bad thing if I leave a piece of tape on here. <laughs> oh, here's a piece. Well, I hadn't, uh, I'll have to go over that part with a rag. Okay, I think we got all the, I'll have to put my bifocals on to, to make sure I got all the tape off. But let's go ahead and, ah, oh, always go the wrong way. We'll go ahead and do this part down here. So my green and my uh, ivory is just a waste of time because it didn't really, well the green in the corner showed up. And I got a little bit right there, which is fine. Very fine. And I may try to get it to go all the way to this tape. Okay. Got a little green showing on this corner. It's going to be weird though, green not showing up anywhere else. Maybe. I don't know. What's paint? Once it dries. Okay, don't neglect the edges. Looks like I didn't even paint it good there. Well, there's some green. Well, you know. I 
But one thing, see how the rag left it white looking? Just have to take something clean and wipe it and it'll get dark again. Uh, okay, tape. Well, that tape didn't work. That looks a little too planned, don't it? Okay. There we go. That looks better. Tape. And where it bled through under, I'll probably just do like I did that last one. Just be a little rough with it. And then go back with something clean. It didn't work as good there, I guess, because that raw wood, or the, because that had been wore down there on that wood. So that may be why. Let's keep on working at that area. There we go. that one off I got that one off now all these I may do that just where they don't look too planned I don't know we'll try it on this one plus the way the paint builds up around the tape it'll kind of level that off a little bit I think my hand works better than the paper towel. So we got this one. Get that white out of that crease. There we go. Okay, now this one. I really got to work on this because of where it bled through a little bit. pressing down pretty hard now if you uh, one good thing with the Vaseline you wouldn't have to do all this scrubbing and then you could always go back over it with soap and scrub it but then it'd be pretty wet so if you, you know if you're patient enough to wait Oh, there's a piece of tape. And Vaseline works great. But if it was on something uh, that water would damage, maybe, you could use this method. Okay, and some of these little straight edges. I'm going to try this instead of hunting down the sandpaper. Let's see. Yeah. Just wherever you want teeny weeny chips. Now, oh, it's leaving mud a little bit right there. Let's find something else. this will be hard enough this ain't hard enough well, what can I use that won't leave metal hold on we'll try this there we go works pretty good. Get along these edges. Look at that. Well, what do you know? Okay, let's try this. Ooh. Let's carefully try this. Don't want to go towards yourself with a razor. I'll try and get it where you can see it. I 
didn't go toward myself. You didn't say that. Sandpaper might be safer on that. Well, what do you know? Makes an awful sound, but it works pretty good. Okay, I think I got it beat up enough. Let's see if I can age this wood a little bit. Yeah, boy. Sure enough. Well, I left scratchy marks there. Shouldn't have done this way it did right there. <laughs> but it did. I'm going to turn it this way. I won't take that white off the edge. Now, that looks better with the wood aged right there. And one of the worst things in the world for you breathing is old varnish. Because I have sanded a lot of old frames years ago and didn't use a mask. Oh my gosh, that killed me. So I can pretty much do everything I want to do with this razor, except those corners. I think I need to break out the sandpaper those but if you slip you'll cut through your paint and that's the problem with razor <laughs> but it could be doctored up okay I need to work on that some because it shows you know the paint sticking up and I'm liking that I like that razor that comes in handy So I'll go ahead and do this, and you've already seen me do this. I'll sand these little corners with some sandpaper. I'm kind of liking the green showing now. It's just not showing enough anywhere else. <laughs> but uh, I'll do all that, and I'll wax it, and I'll put it back together, and then I'll show you the finished product. I like it pretty good, but I'm going to go over this spot. That I don't like. And my good brush is already soaking wet, soaking in water, so I'm going to use this old beat up brush I've been using all this time. Yeah, that was just overkill right there. And with the corners, it seemed like the razor still worked better than the sandpaper. This one, the blade goes in as soon as you let go, so if you had one that didn't do that, it'd be better. I just got like where I could do like that instead of like holding it way out there because then I'd lose control and slice and then I have to go back and try to disguise my little slice so that worked out better that way so now I'll let that spot dry but oh I wanted to show you the corners up close okay there's one corner there's another corner Hopefully it's focusing because where'd I paint? <laughs> I don't want to grab that part of painted. I don't have my reading glasses on so I can't really tell if it's focused or not. And I ain't wild about that corner. I could go over that a little bit with white right there where the green's showing so much. I don't know. And then there's that corner. And so I'll be through soon. Woohoo! Okay, and there it is, and I've kind of staged it to where all my clutter in the dining room don't show since I'm using that for my craft room. <laughs> and uh, I think it looks pretty. And I'll show you up close if I can get the light to quit reflecting in it. Those roses, I'm not wild about, but they are roses, so, uh, you know. 
But when you group it with uh, other shabby chic looking things, it looks so pretty. And of course there's the ceiling fan lights in it. But I hope you like it and I hope you'll subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye y'all.